This could be significant in terms of Rashford's future at Man United Football Club. Now, I thought this was a parody account, because there's many of those on Twitter, but no, this was tweeted from the official Marcus Rashford account. Notably, he's got uh, a dark uh, centre circle, which means no picture. And this is a response to a tweet by a Man United fan a couple of hours, or 12 hours ago, as it says here. And I quote, The way Marcus Rashford is being treated is absolutely disgusting. It's cruel. It's abuse. And so over an hour ago, Marcus Rashford replied to it in the early hours of the morning. I appreciate your support. Exclamation mark. It is abuse and has been for months. Full stop. Enough is enough. Notably, there is no exclamation mark on the end of the second part of enough. But why didn't Rashford reply to it straight away? Why has he waited until the far top red on YouTube have fell asleep? Maybe so he doesn't get any scrutiny because he knows that they're not going to say anything until, you know, the cock uh, crows, you know? And I know that Max Rashford has had criticism. He was misquoted. He was uh, defamatory against. And you have every single right in a democracy, whatever that is anymore, to nip it in the bud and say, that's not right. You've misquoted me. You've made me uh, think, you made people think that I said this when I haven't said it. And he called out one of the far top red channels. <coughs> plastic stand little cough there and for balance the top red paddock as well balance and I've criticised Rashford for a long time and I've said categorically I would not have let him sign that new contract because just because you score 30 goals in a season that doesn't mean you're a great player it doesn't mean anything Kevin Phillips scored 30 goals in the 99-2000 season. And he didn't win anything. But he got the golden boot instead. And Michael Ricketts uh, scored uh, 15 goals before February. Marcus Rashford scored 17 goals in the league. Right? And that's the same total, I believe, that Martial got in his first season in all competitions that he played in. Right. And I want to give him a a new contract. He didn't deserve it. He was not worthy of it. You don't go from being Fernando Torres uh, post his injury to Kylian Mbappe in a space of a year unless there's enhancement going on. So to speak. Now I called out Rashford for poking his nose in a Seb Everard case, which he had no right to. And also in, in the month that, there was a woman, now it was Tom Lucy on the woman part, in the House of Lords, who's from the Green Party, says it all, loonies. And I think her name is Jenny Jones. And she st uh, stood up in the House of Lords, which we're paying for, by the way. They get about, what, 500 quid, something like that. But it's in the hundreds anyway. And she said there should be a cur curfew for men even though it was a police officer who abused his powers who killed Seb Everard. That had nothing to do with Marcus Rashford. And I was the only Man United fan, right? Because I don't, you know, um, you know, say anything untruth, who called him out on it. And I also called him out on when he had a campaign for free school meals uh, for kids which none of the money went uh, out of his own pocket. It was taxpayers' money who funded it. And there was footage a couple of years ago with all the food that Marcus Rashford gathered up. It was then uh, wasted and was never eaten. All that food going to waste. And why is Marcus Rashford, why did he, past tense, make it a solo one-man mission to get kids free school meals? 
countering in that some of the kids have wealthy parents so they can pay physical meals themselves. So you taxpayers, you're paying for the privilege of having all that food to all those kids who could afford it and all the uh, food that was left over that was wasted and sent down the spout. And I said about Mark Strachan a couple of years ago, what does he want to be? Does he want to be a pioneering politician or does he want to continue being a footballer? And I will call out this guy every single opportunity until he listens to reason. He's had a bad season. He can't get away from that. He's got to stop sulking and get on with the job. And I would have sold Rashford. He shouldn't have got that elusive contract. Remember Aubameyang, when he signed a new contract, he scored loads of goals for Ateta, and a new manager syndrome, when they won the FA Cup. The next season, he only scored one measly goal, and then they catted him off in the January transfer window. Uh, the next year, in January, he paid off his contract, and then he went to Barcelona. C'est la vie. You know? So, I didn't think it was right to give Rashford a new contract. But he needs to learn and listen that he's playing for Man United Football Club. And he all comes out with a defeatist attitude. I mean, I suppose if Tanag was managing me, I probably would have had the, the same uh, approach. But Rashford needs to get, get a grip on reality. Somebody's got to give him the, the shake that he needs to tell him, you need to perform on the pitch. If you don't perform on the pitch then that's it. You're finished. You're finito. Right? So it'll be interesting to see what's next. Will Tanag reprimand Rash Rashford for that tweet, for this tweet, and the reply to it? Would he be treated the same as uh, Jane Sancho? And what will the future hold for Rashford now on in? Will this be the catalyst for him to leave Man United Football Club? And based on what he tweeted, and the situation surrounding him, and all the lies and the deceit and the criticism, I think this could be the beginning and the end of Marcus Rashford as a footballer with Man United Football Club.